Those who followed my Apollo 13 live stream probably saw the phrase gimbal lock pop up a number of times, and a lot of you asked me what it is. So today on Venture Space, we're looking at what exactly is gimbal lock. So we need to break this one down just a little bit before getting into the question of gimbal lock. At the heart of the Apollo Guidance computer was an inertial measurement unit, or IMU. The IMU is a spherical housing about the size of a soccer ball that contains three nested gimbals. They're set at right angles from one another, supporting a central platform mounted on the innermost gimbal. The outer gimbal is mounted on the navigation base, and this is mounted rigidly to the spacecraft. Every time the spacecraft moves, or rather every time the IMU detects any kind of change of attitude, the gyros signal to motors to return the platform to its original orientation. So as the spacecraft moves around on its path to the moon, the guidance platform inside remains stable. The guidance platform was aligned on the ground before the flight, and of course it would drift occasionally during the mission. To compensate for this drift, astronauts would realign the platform using star sightings. But its use still remained, and it still gave the astronauts information on their attitude in space. The information from these gyros was displayed on the Flight Director Attitude Indicator, more commonly known as the 8-Ball. So it's the fact that there are three gyros involved in the IMU that make gimbal lock possible. The three gimbals account for the spacecraft's three axes of motion, its axes of pitch, yaw, and roll. Because the IMU works in all three directions, any change in the attitude's orientation at all is registered on the 8-Ball. The constant attitude information about these three axes gives the astronaut a very keen sense of exactly where they're pointing in space but it's also something that you can lose. The phenomenon of gimbal lock is one wherein the outer gimbal moves with the spacecraft to a point where it lies parallel to the inner gimbal. At this point, all three gimbal axes would be lined up on a single plane and none would be able to move around the basic plane to resume a normal orientation. In short, once the gimbals are lined up, they can't realign themselves to give you an orientation and they become locked. It's the confluence of three angles of the gimbals that creates gimbal lock and prevents them from moving around to get out of that situation. The Apollo guidance computer was actually designed to prevent gimbal lock by giving the astronauts a warning when they approach that devastating alignment. However, it was possible still to fall into gimbal lock. This was what was happening on Apollo 13 when the spacecraft was wildly pitching and yawing around in the wake of the oxygen tank explosion. And that is why you hear in the movie and read in the transcript astronauts yelling about watching the gimbals. Losing their attitude in space would have made the entire situation on Apollo 13 just that much worse. The simplest way to avoid gimbal lock would have been to add a fourth gimbal into the IMU, just giving it another reference point so that the four wouldn't be able to align the same way. This is what Mike Collins actually asked for for Christmas, jokingly, when he was orbiting the moon on Apollo 11. From his orbital vantage point in the command module, Collins was trying to find the lunar module Eagle on the surface, but every time he got close to gimbal lock, he had to stop. And that's why he wished he'd had a fourth gimbal on board. So I hope that clears up gimbal lock for you guys. If not, leave a question below and I'll try my best to answer it. But I also want to give you two quick book recommendations of things that would maybe explain it in a lot more detail. Uh, the first is Frank O'Brien's The Apollo Guides Computer, which is everything you ever slash never wanted to know about the Apollo Guides Computer, and it is a brilliant resource. And uh, the second is How Apollo Flew to the Moon by Dave Woods. It is it is exactly what the title says. It is the details of how Apollo flew to the moon, including the guidance computer. Both are fantastic resources by excellent authors, and I would highly recommend it if you guys want all the nitty gritty details on things like attitude control in space on Apollo. So as always, leave any questions, comments, and ideas for things you'd like to see covered in future episodes in the comment section below. Be sure to follow me on Twitter for Vintage Space content every single day of the week. And with new episodes going up every Tuesday and Friday, be sure to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.